Hi everyone, Knoopsy here, and Sony is back with the phone that changes everything for their line of Xperia devices, the Xperia XZ2. Since the Xperia Z back in 2013, the design was always the same year after year after year till this year with this device looking radically different. For me personally, I think it's a beautiful phone that really does stand out, although it's kind of a case of form over function. The back is this liquid looking curved glass slab that looks absolutely gorgeous in all environments. The negative though, the shape itself. When you put this phone on a table, it will start spinning and sliding if you touch it at all, and it is definitely very annoying. It actually results in one small section at the back that's the highest raised point, getting all scratched and scuffed up. The sharp corners of past Xperia devices are now gone, replaced with much curvier, much more comfortable edges, but the negative though, this is the slipperiest phone I think I've ever used. The sides have no grip, it'll slide to your pocket, off tables, and I really feel concerned using this phone on a daily basis with no case. The back design with the camera and fingerprint scanner does look great, but the fingerprint scanner, while not in the worst place ever, I wish it was a bit more pronounced. It is quick to unlock though, but you knew it was coming, there's no headphone jack. The phone itself though has picked up quite a bit of overall thickness. It's a very thick phone, but has a nice weight to it that's just not too heavy, but just right. Now besides these design concerns, the rest of the phone is very well polished. The buttons are tactile in great places, there's still a two-stage camera shutter button, premium hand feel, SD card slot, IP68 water resistance, dual front-facing stereo speakers that are clear and quite loud, and finally an 18x9 5.7-inch display. The display wall 1080p and LCD looks really good as well, with solid brightness, good sharpness, rich vibrant colors, and while blacks really aren't as deep and contrasty as an OLED panel, I don't really have too many major complaints here. Instead of using a terrible OLED panel just for the sake of it, Sony played it safe here with LCD, which was kind of a good choice. With the Snapdragon 845, 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage, this phone flies. 6 gigs of RAM would be good for future proofing, but still, it's honestly a very fast device that works great for everything. For gaming, multitasking, opening apps, all lightning fast, you're gonna really have no complaints here. The battery life is also impressive with a 3180mAh battery. For my usage, 8am till around 11 o'clock pm, I end most days with around 30-40% to battery left. Now I am a heavy user, I use my phone all the time for video watching and just Twitter, Instagram, Gmail, all that kind of stuff. And the next day if I don't charge the phone overnight, I have enough to get to the afternoon around lunchtime. So it is pretty solid battery life. And with Qi Wireless Charging and Quick Charge 3 through USB-C, you can charge the phone up again quite quick. Running on the phone is Sony's take on Android Oreo, which has never been more clean and simple with some usual Sony apps and bloat of course, but it is much improved for design and features. The whole dynamic vibration thing is a complete gimmick, it's distracting, doesn't sync up properly, doesn't work in some applications, let's just forget about it. There's also this really cool 3D scanning feature so you can scan in your face, food, other people, objects, all that kind of stuff. It is a very cool overall feature, but you're probably not going to use it too much. But if you mess up the face scan, which is very easy to do, you're going to get some nightmarish results. But the biggest features for the software are the improved cleanliness and fluidity, and both for me are quite a big deal. The 19 megapixel camera is a big part of this phone and I honestly couldn't be more impressed with Sony. The front 5 megapixel camera though, is not great. The rear camera uses this intelligent auto mode that based on the frame, optimizes images. All my photos for this review were shot in auto mode, but the new manual mode is actually much improved, with the ability to just shoot photos straight up with HDR and no intelligent features, as well as actually using the new manual controls with everything you'd actually expect to be there. Photos themselves are excellent, in daylight, great vibrancy, dynamic range, and sharpness.
and low light, things also do look mostly good. Sometimes shots are a bit muddy or grainy, but that is expected. It's no Galaxy S9 or Huawei P20 Pro for low light, but for my testing, I got some great shots. Wow. 4K video looks great mostly with good stabilization, but there is no tap to focus in 4K mode, so it's 100% relying on autofocus with no input from you at all. Nine sixty frames per second slow motion is now in ten eighty p up from seven twenty p, and it's great just like last year. The time is three seconds over six seconds from before because of the extra resolution, but it's not bad at all. To summarize, the Xperia XC2 is Sony's best work yet for an Xperia phone easily. It checks off all the right boxes with the only negative stemming from some of the hardware design features as well as some of the software features. But knowing Sony's past track record, I'm sure the design is going to get refined and improved year after year after year. But after saying all this, the Xperia XC2 Premium with more RAM, better 4K display and a second camera is also to be launched quite soon. So you have to make the decision if the extra features on the XC2 Premium are worth it to you for the price jump. You also have to decide if what Sony offers you here is just that much better than the competition, especially when most of these phones in the flagship category are all kind of the same price. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and thank you for watching.